The reason why we are setting this out as a topic for tonight's discussion is that we are anticipating something very dramatic may happen in Parliament on the night of the 6th of January. And I remember that four years ago, I was right there in the Chamber of Parliament when the legendary Professor Michael Quay took the oath of office and was sworn in. Now, Parliament operates by consensus, as we know, between the majority and the minority. In the history of Ghana's politics, at least the fourth Republican politics, there's been consensus all the time. In fact, I dare say that since 1960, there's been consensus of all the parliamentary uh, speakers. It began with Quist, and then it became uh, Foriata in the mid-1960s. When Parliament returned in 69, it was Nia Mao Le Nung. We know that. In 1979, it was His Lordship Justice Griffith Randolph. He was the Speaker of Parliament of the Third Republic. And then enter 1992, Justice D.F. And there was no problem there because it was just a single party parliament. And then 1996, the minority came in, but there was consensus. What does consensus mean? Consensus in Parliament, according to the standing orders and the 1992 Constitution, means that. The, um, the majority is going to nominate, and the minority will second the motion. So what happens in the night of the Sith, uh, uh, when the turnover is occurring, is that the majority will nominate a Speaker of Parliament, and then the minority will second the motion. Consensus is achieved. They already know what they're going to do, and they know the names that are going to come up. And then the majority, again, will nominate the first Deputy Speaker. Minority will second the motion. And then now, minority will nominate the second Deputy Speaker, and majority will second the motion. Now, the Constitution says that the Speaker of Parliament may be elected among, from among members of Parliament or from uh, persons who are not members of Parliament. But the first Deputy Speaker and the second Deputy Speaker have to be nominated from among members of Parliament only. So that's, that's the restriction on that. But So majority will get the Speaker, they'll get the first Deputy Speaker, and then minority will get the second Deputy Speaker. So that's how consensus works. However, in 2004, the consensus completely broke down. It broke down because there was confusion between the majority and minority. Tonight, we'll show you the video of the uh, clerk of parliament announcing and calling for nominations when the majority nominated somebody and the minority nominated somebody else, and uh, the matter was put to a ballot. And that's what brought Bejina Sechi Hughes to be Speaker of Parliament of the, uh, I believe that was the, third par the, the fifth parliament of 2004. So, the reason why we are bringing this question up is that we are anticipating that that may occur again, given the closeness of the parliamentary seats, 137, 137, with a single independent candidate who may become 138 for the new patriotic party, and therefore they may have a majority of one. The, MP, the NDC, the minority side, uh, might, might push it hard. They might push a the hard stone. They might, they might push a hard block. They might go for broke, and they might say that, look, if you will not give us X, Y, we will also nominate. Because it's going to be a secret ballot, and you only, have, you only need one MP to change his philosophy, and then, boom, something happens in Parliament. So we are looking closely at that. Because of that, we have taken a particular interest in who are the nominees that are going through the mind of the uh, majority for the purpose of Speaker. So this, let's come back to this. This is the Parliamentary Chamber. Okay, so the Speaker sits in the middle, and uh, all the time in Ghana, uh, to the Speaker's right is the majority, and to the speaker's left is the minority. So the seats you see in front of the, of the first table here is the leadership of the majorities. That's the leader of the house, the majority leader, deputy majority leader, clerk, uh, the chief whip of, of the majority side. So the speaker is going to be in that chair. Up the speaker is always the press gallery, and then the rest is the, uh, is the public gallery. Okay, let's move to look at the persons who are going to now be nominated, as far as we know, from the MPP side, who they are going to be nominated. Okay, let's, let's deal with it. Okay, uh, let me. And the nominee is, is this distinguished Supreme Court judge, Justice Jones Duce, JSC, is a major player in uh, the race to become the Speaker of Parliament for this event. Justice Jones Duce, uh, for some people in the MPP, think that he should be the nominee uh, from the party and, and recommended to the uh, minority for the consensus that the minority supports it. Okay. Uh, why do people support Justice Jones Duce? Now, they think that he's a distinguished Supreme Court judge. Given the closeness of Parliament, you need somebody who is coming in, not as a regular politician on side A or side B, but somebody who could garner the respect of all the sides of the House. So that's why they're talking about Justice Jones Duce. What goes against Justice Jones Duce is that given the situation that you have, what some people now call a hung parliament from the Westminster term, 
you're going to have a speaker who must be strong and direct. And the NDC and MPP are hostile to each other. They will remain hostile to each other until the next elections. So if you have parties who are hostile to each other, you need a speaker of parliament who is brutally strong on one side, you know, and who can, who can say that the eyes have it, who can say that this is the direction that parliament is going and I'm not going to allow parliament to be derailed. You need that speaker who is able to show the partisan colors, the partisan colors of the speaker that comes out so that he's not concerned about a minority press conference that says that he's partisan. That's what some people are saying. That's, that's the argument that goes against Justice Doce because he's not partisan like that. He's not able to come and say that I'm MPP and I'm MPP all day long and, and this is the MPP philosophy and, and this bill will have to pass and he might not be able to do that. He's going to come in and try and achieve consensus. Some people think that in this current political climate in Ghana, you will not be able to achieve consensus. If you have the speakership, you go for broke and you get the work done and you get the president's policies implemented. Straightforward, simple and short. Here is a president who has taken a loss of some votes of about another 400,000 from the last election. He needs to come back and impress the Ghanaian people. Here is an MPP who have lost so many seats in parliament. They want to recover and be able to do well. So they bring their policies to parliament. They're not going to tolerate a minority derailing the process one way or the other using parliamentary technicalities. So therefore, you need a speaker who goes for broke. This is the way I'm going. This, this project must be done. This loan must be approved. Even if it's 2 a.m., it has to be approved. He's going to call members to order. When there's controversy about a particular decision, he says, as many as are in favor, say aye, say aye. As many as are against, say no, say no. No matter how it sounds, whether the no is bigger, like Kotoko has scored a goal at the stadium, or the eyes is small, like Busuan Duhaf has scored a goal at the stadium, he just says that the eyes have it. That's those who are thinking that just Jones Doche is a very nice, clever, beautiful man, but he's not the man for this kind of parliament. That's the argument they are making. Now, this is our preliminary comment on this one. So we'll come up with better research analysis as we go on and as we keep our ears on the ground and we are eavesdropping on important conversations. We'll, we'll come up with, with that for you, hopefully on Thursday. So let's move on to the next person. This is Professor Michael Quay, the legendary professor of political science, barrister at law, and also former member of parliament for the Domi Kwabinya constituency and the incumbent speaker. So the argument that I made is that, well, you know, this is the way people want it. They want a speaker who can be very brutal, who can go for it, go for bloke. This is what I want. This is what the president wants. This is what I'm going to do. This is what my party wants, that kind of thing. Uh, a speaker who can on occasion be belligerent and he has some near misses with the minority, banter here and there, but he remains speaker in his chair. He has a clear sense of direction of where he's going, and he wants the policies of the government to, to, to be to occur, to win in parliament. You're going to have people think that Michael Quay, if you look at his credentials, maybe he's the one for that job. I don't know. But those who are supporting Michael Quay, that's the point they are making. Also, they make the point that a tribal point that Michael Quay is gone. And traditionally, the speakership has gone to gone people. Uh, once or twice is gone away from the Ghana people, but traditionally, the Quist, the first one, is gone. Nia Mao Lin, Griffiths Randolph, Justice D.F.N. and Peter Lajete, all these people have been Ghana people. And so the point is made. Again, we'll come back and make a, another point. This is just a preliminary concern. And there are those also who are pushing for another name. Here, the incumbent party chairman of the new patriotic party, the legendary Freddie Blay. They talk about Freddie Blay's political credentials. Freddie Blay is originally a CPP person, and his, his uncle, R.S. Blay, was one of those who, uh, uh, they, they say that if there was a big seven, R.S. Blay would have been the seventh person because on the night of the, on the day that the big six were arrested, hours before they were arrested, they were actually in the company of Blay, and Blay had gone somewhere and the big six got arrested, and they went to prison and they became big six. So R.S. Blay is a founding member of the United Gold Coast Convention. That's his uncle. That's, that's his political godfather. And so Freddie went on the side of the CPP. He's always been CPP. In fact, he's been a CPP member of parliament for Ellen Bele constituency from 1996 until 2008 when he was defeated by Amako Fibua. All the time that Freddie was CPP, he sort of aligned in parliament, not with the NDC, but with the MPP. And he was elected in 1996 as a second deputy speaker proposed by the J M MPP and the J.H. Mensah who were in parliament at the time. So Freddie has enjoyed very good relations with the MPP. We know, of course, that given the crisis in the CPP, he left to join the MPP and he became a first national vice chairman. Uh, during the Paul Afoko crisis, uh, Freddie became the acting chairman and led the party to the victory of 2016. And, and then he was elected substantive chairman in Koforidia in the middle of the first term of Nana Kufadu. People talk about Freddie's connections across board politically, that even though he's 
aligned to the MPP. He has some skills that can get him to agree with some of the NDC people or get some of the NDC people to agree with him. They think that he's a very affable character and those who know him say that he's very jovial and he talks to everybody nicely and he sort of respects everybody. That's one thing that goes for Fredley. From the PR and the media side, he is the uh, author of the Daily Guide newspaper. And Freddie has been running the newspaper for, for a very long time with his wife, uh, Ambassador Gina Blay. So on the media side, it is believed that Freddie has his hands over the media and that where there are crises, he will be able to connect with the media and, and put out the information in the right way. And then, of course, he has a newspaper, The Daily Guide, which is one of the most influential print media houses in Ghana today. They also have TV and all that. So Freddie comes with this kind of, you know, the heavy container, 40 footer container. And people think that in terms of running the show on making a decision that this is the way we are going, again, some people think that you can trust Freddie Blay. But I don't know. So um, and we have something else. Okay, so there's Michael Quay and there's uh, uh, Justice Jones Duchy. Now, on Thursday when we come, we will have eliminated a number from three to two. And we'll show you who are the final two. And one of those two, on or around the 27th of December, will be called uh, by the MPP side and he will be told that he's been nominated for speaker. The next part of the job is to convince the NDC, if they are still minority by then, to convince the NDC, and that's how we say it. This is a very fluid political situation, never occurred in Ghana. You don't know who is minority today, majority tomorrow. For now, the MPP is majority, uh, but we don't know what will happen. The AC is going to, to uh, get the results and court actions may come in. So the MPP might increase their majority or something else may happen, we don't know. We're going to tell you that two people are now on the list. Uh, for now, it's three. Justice Doce, remember that name, Supreme Court Judge, Professor Michael Quaid, the incumbent member of uh, Speaker of Parliament, and Freddie Blay, the national chairman of the party, who is also a former member of Parliament and a former first deputy, uh, second deputy Speaker of Parliament, I should say. So we'll get back to this story on Thursday. Now, though, let's show you the video of what happened in 2004, the contest. Here it is. I shall now proceed to invite domination or such qualified person or person to occupy the chair as speaker. In so doing, it is important to draw attention to Order 85 of our standing order, which states, a member addressing himself to the clerk shall propose such person to the House as its speaker and shall move that such person in quote, do take the chair of this house as speaker, which motion must be seconded without debate. I now call for nomination. Speaker. Before the subject body and house to propose. Ebenezer Benjamin City Hughes as a speaker for this parliament of ours. Mr. Chairman, Mr. City Hughes was born at Cape Coast on 4th September 1939. He had his basic education at Cape Coast Government Boys School and attended at this Adjunct College, also at Cape Coast, where he obtained the West African School Certificate in 1958. He also obtained the Cambridge Higher School Certificate in December 1960. Honorable, right Honorable Peter Lajete is best suited to preside over the affairs of this House as Speaker of Parliament. I have his consent here to be nominated, which I hereby do, and to be elected by you, Honorable Colleagues in this House, to be the Speaker of Parliament. And I quote, take notice that I have given my consent to be nominated for election as speaker of the fourth parliament of the fourth republic pursuant 
to Standing Order 8, Sub-Rule 4 of the Standing Orders of Parliament, unquote. Thank you. Any other nomination? Any second, please. Mr. Chairman, <coughs> I rise to second the motion ably and brilliantly moved by the Honorable Minority Leader that Mr. Peter Alajete do take the chair of this House as Speaker, in line with standing orders number 85 of this House. Mr. Speaker, I do so. Mr. Chairman, I do so because the national interest and my conscience allow me to second the motion. Thank you. In that event, I'm enjoying understanding order 91, which states where more than one person is proposed, a motion shall be made and seconded in respect of each person, which has been done. And the House shall proceed to elect a speaker by a secret ballot in accordance with the provisions of this order. Announce the results. For Mr. Ebenezer Seki Hughes, 134. For Mr. Peter Alajete, 96. For Mr. Peter Alajete, 96. He's been escorted by the majority leader. Honorable S.K. Uswa Japan. I, Ebenezer Pejuna Pechi Hughes, do in the name of the Almighty God swear, do in the name of the Almighty God swear. Okay, so we are, you saw that. So it was Peter Ala Ajete who was nominated by the minority. He was the, the incumbent uh, speaker. Somehow it was reported that relations between himself and President Kofor was not the best. And so President Kofor wanted to change him and the party had to oblige. So Peter Ajete was changed. And Peter Ajete was now nominated by the minority by Alban Bagmin. A vote was called and uh, Bejina Sechi, he was the president's choice, won it. And so he became the speaker. That was the drama of the 2004 parliament. I don't know whether we're going to have a similar drama, this one, but we'll be covering it and we'll be telling you what will happen before it happens. So that's to keep your eye here on Good Evening Ghana. Now let's...